Hello again, Mike Mazzalongo, BibleTalk.tv. This is lesson number nine, the final lesson in our series for small groups entitled, How to Love Someone You Hate. And uh, the title of this final lesson is Love Bomb, Love Bomb. Um, this, uh, I want to remind you again that this class has been a, a how-to, you know, how to do something, supposed to be a hands-on type of class. Um, uh, in, the, in the process of, of being able to love somebody that we're at odds with, uh, someone who's offended us, someone we hate, we dislike. Uh, part of our discussion in loving the people we hate has been a change of thinking. It begins with a change of thinking. Uh, blessing and, and not cursing, in other words, using our mouth uh, to bless the person rather than talk badly about them or cursing them or refraining from using our tongue uh, to you know, say negative things about our enemy. Uh, walking a mile in their shoes, which means uh, trying to uh, develop some sort of empathy with uh, how they feel, what they think, what's motivating their actions. Um, never taking revenge uh, as, as a way of controlling our own spirit uh, while we're in this uh, difficult uh, emotional uh, state. Uh, these things as a way of uh, getting the focus away from self and, and the feelings away from ourself begins there, begins with our mind and our heart and our, and, and our, and our tongues. Um, so those strategies um, uh, have uh, guided us in how we should think during these times of crisis. Some of the things we've talked about have concentrated on the things we are to do uh, during a time like this. Um, let me put those up there. Uh, what we should do, uh, do doing something beautiful, finding, out, finding uh, acts of kindness that we might be able to do uh, for uh, the one that we're at odds with. Uh, winning the peace, in other words, focusing on winning uh, the peace with the individual rather than focusing on winning the war, making sure that everybody knows we're the victim, uh, getting the last word, you know, winning the argument. Uh, that only continues the debate. It only actually you know, it throws a, you know, gas on the fire, if you wish. Winning the peace is a completely different strategy, but it's one that even if we don't succeed in in, 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 in being at peace with our enemy, we do succeed in becoming uh, at peace uh, with ourselves, at peace with God. And of course, the one we talked about last time, making room for God, you know, bring God into the equation with uh, study and prayer and meditation on His word. Doing these things as a way of creating new feelings or more positive and productive feelings that we might have for our enemy. So in our last class, we're going to discuss the final step in learning to love our enemies, the step that requires the most doing. Okay? All these other steps have geared us up and prepared us for step number seven, which usually is the one that brings us over the uh, finish line. Um, in Romans chapter 12, verse 20, Paul talks about this step. He says, but if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him a drink, for in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his uh, head. In other words, when you want to bring your enemy into submission, bomb them with love. Bomb them with love. This is difficult and it requires uh, many times a swallowing of our pride. Uh, it requires a step of faith all at the same time, but it is the key play in the battle to love your enemy. Remember, that's the goal. The goal is I, I want to be able to love my enemy, not just not think about my enemy anymore, not just get him out of my life, get her out of my life, but to genuinely have feelings of Christian love uh, for our enemy. Uh, Paul gives us three steps uh, in uh, bombing our enemies into submission with love. Three steps in order to achieve this. Uh, number one, he says, find a need. Paul says, give food or water depending on need. And this is the first step. Asking ourselves, what does my enemy need? Does he need things? Does she need respect? Is it, you know, they need space? Uh, they need to know that they're right or they have a point. 
before you offer something, find out what it is that they really need. Many times their actions are based on unfulfilled needs. Take the time to observe and, and ask if you have the opportunity. Uh, if you're not sure, pray and ask God to reveal to you what your enemy requires. What is it that you could give that is meaningful uh, to them? Step number two, take a look at your own resources. You may not have everything your enemy needs, but maybe some of the things that you have can fulfill some of their needs. When God uh, looked at our needs and He looked at His resources, He gave us what we needed. And that was, of course, His Son, Jesus Christ, uh, to die on the cross for our sins. Sometimes our enemy needs what is most precious to us. Uh, and, and we have to make a sacrifice in order to fulfill their need. And then thirdly, heap on the good. Paul says that the doing of good will heap on burning coals to the head of our enemies. Uh, you probably won't win over the person with just a single act. You will probably have to heap on a big plate full of love in order to win them over. Uh, the idea of burning coals is that the, the good you do in return for evil produces the heat of shame on your, on your enemy. When you are ugly and spiteful and the person comes right back at you with love and kindness, don't you feel a little embarrassed and red-faced, hot and sweaty with guilt and shame? Paul says that the bomb of love will produce the heat of shame. What he doesn't say, but what is implied is that hopefully that guilt and shame will lead to repentance and reconciliation. Bombing with love is like a bombing raid. It takes a lot of bombs to soften them up. So don't be discouraged if you don't win the peace immediately with just one act of love. You need sometimes many acts of love to convince them that that is your attitude. So let's uh, summarize a little bit here uh, some of the things that we have uh, learned. So uh, this is the final class on this uh, topic, but this is not your final effort at loving someone that you may hate or dislike. My final words are, uh, as a resource person, are the following. Remember that there will always be an enemy It'd be nice if, if you know, someone offended you only one time in your life and you had to apply these principles just one time and that was it. But we know that that isn't the case, right? We go through life bumping into each other and offending people and uh, people hurting our feelings may not even know about it. And it happens to us all the time. So don't be surprised or discouraged. This is part of life. And in the effort to you know, love our enemy, uh, success is variable and, and the process is messy sometimes and it takes a, a great amount of time. So it's not a, you know, a quick fix. I've been able to give you some principles here in a, in a few short lessons, but the application of these things uh, takes time. And, and the amount of success that you have is, is variable from person to person, from situation to situation. You are forearmed if you understand that in life there will always be someone uh, who offends you or someone that hurts your feelings to a greater or lesser uh, degree. If you know that in advance, then you won't be so surprised or disappointed when it, when it happens. Number two, these principles are for life. Everyone, whether they take the class or not, needs to learn and use these principles. Uh, that, you, uh, that you were here, you know, or that you're at home or in class watching this video uh, tells me that you're a, a person who is interested in, uh, in, in, in having a better relationship with uh, people around you that have offended you or people that you have a problem with. So that's a, that's a good thing. And, and, and the things that you learn in this class, you'll be able to use them now, later, 20 years from now. These principles don't change. The same things work all the time, whether you're a teenager or you're a senior citizen. 
these principles apply in everyone's life at various times in their lives. And then one other thing I want to remind you of, very important, sometimes you're the enemy. Sometimes you're the one uh, that someone else is crying out to God uh, uh, about. Uh, so try to be sensitive to the fact that uh, there are people who struggle with you and, and, and you may be uh, the individual uh, that someone hates and, and you may not even be aware of it. This should make you just a little less harsh and a little more eager to love your enemy and to be a little more uh, forgiving towards them. Okay, so that's our uh, class series uh, end. Uh, thank you for participating in this small group uh, uh, series and I pray that God blesses you in every effort that you make to improve your relationship, uh, not only with the people that you love, but also with the people that you hate. All right, I've got some final questions that you can use now in your uh, small group discussion. God bless you, we'll see you next time, bye-bye. Question number one, what resources do you personally have to offer people who have wronged you? Question number two, have you ever reached a point of forgiveness with an enemy? If you have, share that experience with your group. Question number three, on a scale of one to 10, how successful have you been in learning to love the person you came into this class hating? What is still needed for you to reach your goal? Question number four, what has been the most beneficial thing you have learned from this class? What would be the first piece of advice that you would give someone who is struggling with this problem, trying to love someone they cannot stand?